Hi, this is Rick. I'm here in my studio and you're visiting my YouTube channel, Rick Sorwitz Watercolor. Once again, this year I decided to put together a series of holiday card videos that you can share with your friends and family. I post all the content on the uh, project page of my website. If you go there, you'll find the links for the videos, links for the templates uh, for, that I use for the cards, and reference photos of the cards themselves. And they're all five by seven inches and you can put those on a blank greeting card stock or just on regular watercolor paper, whatever you choose. But I hope you enjoy uh, watching this series and uh, enjoy painting them and sharing with your friends and family. I'm in my studio and uh, ready to begin this Christmas card. So this is the template for it. It's a, a wreath with some Christmas bulbs on it, looking through it to a snowman sitting on a hill. Um, and uh, you'll find the, the link to this template on the studio page of my website on the project page, uh, actually. And uh, you'll find the link to that project page in the description of this video. So I've transferred that to my sheet of paper here. This is five by uh, seven inch image. And uh, I'm gonna start just by painting this snowman. So I'm gonna just use this is a royal blue I have, but I have not a lot of pigment in there. Uh, quite a bit of water. And I'm gonna go ahead and just paint some shadows on this snowman. I'm not gonna get real detailed or anything on this. And I'll use a little bit of water. Kind of soften the transition of that shape. A little bit there. So just a snowman there. I actually make it a little more pigment and get darker on the back, the back of that. So just a touch towards a middle value so we can see that snowman. I might put a line or so on that or later. And actually, I want to lift out a little bit. I want that to be lighter. On this side. Okay. And now, still gonna soften that. Now I'm gonna take some of that royal blue. And I don't need a lot of pigment for this, but and I'm going to um, you know just paint a kind of a gradate gradation, gradated wash on the hillside here. So put a little paint down and now I've got some water. So I'm just gonna soften that and lighten that as it moves away from the edge. A little bit here. Soften that. Doesn't need to be too strong out there. And uh, before I move on, I want to dry that so I don't lose the edge. I don't get it. Don't get it all muddy. So let me dry this quickly. Okay, that's dry. And I'm going to paint a hat on him. And I'm going to use this is neutral tint. You could use a, if you don't have a, a neutral tint. I don't generally use it too much. I usually mix this, but just for time, I'm just going to paint that. Uh, with neutral tint, left a little bit of it. <clears throat> but you could use uh, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna mixed together to get a nice uh, black for the hat. And now I'm going to stick just a little bit of an orange mark there for his nose. Just a very small indication of that. So pretty simple. And next, I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, paint the, uh, the bulbs here. And I'm going to use a small brush. I'm using, a, you could use any, you know, any bright kind of red. I'm using a pyro red. That happens to be a a red that I have on my palette. I'm going to add some water and thin that out and then I'll add a little deeper 
uh, color to this once I put the wash on. Okay, It'll take a little bit and get this one. Yeah, it's it's a wet mixture that I'm putting down there. We'll get this one. Okay, and I'm going to grab, before the other ones get too dry, I'm grabbing uh, some alizarin crimson. And I'm just going to touch this. I want to get it while it's wet so that it gets a soft gradation into that. Just touch the... I'm not brushing, I'm just touching that a little bit to let some of that color get in there. And because it's wet, it, it'll just diffuse into the wash that I've already put down. And I've got one here. And one here. Yeah, pick up some of the excess moisture in there. Now I'm going to do the same. I'm going to take some of this alizarin and I'm going to touch this bulb while it's the shape while it's wet and let some of this deeper color kind of softly gradate into what's going on there. I could go darker if I want, but I really don't need to, I don't think. And uh, before I go any further, I'm going to dry that because I don't want any of the colors I'll be putting on next to bleed into those. That's dry. And I'm going to take some burnt orange. This is a, you could use burnt sienna or you can mix something. And I'm adding some water to that, so a fluid mixture. And for this, I'm going to take a, a rigger brush. This happens to be a number six rigger brush. Make sure I have enough pigment in here. Okay. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the all these uh, branches that's on my wreath here that I have. And I'm going to rotate this as I paint this so that my arm can get in the right position to paint. I'm going to take this again. Rotate again. Okay, now I'll get this back lined up. So those will be my branches, and I want to dry those. So next, this is a number six round brush that I have. I'm taking sap green, pretty much as it is. It'll do the job for, the, for what I want to paint. And I need to make sure there's enough moisture in my brush, but not too much. Now I'm going to paint these kind of pine needle marks on this. Now you could use a rigger brush, but I, I, th I think using a, a, a pretty good round brush with a nice point works a little better because it gives a little bit more uh, variation in the mark that's being made in terms of it can get a little wider and then get narrow again. I mean, you don't have to be real precise with this, but real particular. Okay. 
let some of these overlap and just kind of run together. And I'm going to come back with a little darker uh, color to kind of accent some of the marks that I'm making. You can get wider with some of these marks. You can get longer, you get shorter, whatever you, you know, whatever you feel like the marks you want to make. here. Some of this, you know, they, they run together and they'll make a larger, kind of a larger area of color, which is fine. think you want a little more of something just you know make some marks in that kind of come together and make a you know a, a little a circle here to kind of look through with the snowman all right so now I'm gonna take this sap green I'm gonna add a little bit of this royal blue to it and I'm gonna accent some of this with uh, some darker marks. Darker marks can kind of suggest overlapping in some areas. dry this okay so I'm going to take just a few more dark marks put it around here to reinforce this I'm not just going to outline this I'm just kind of going around making marks lifting my brush a little bit and I still want to get a little darker 
in here. I'm going to go along a couple of these uh, branches. You know, I'm not just following the line, I'm lifting my brush as I make these marks. Pick some areas to make some of this noticeably darker. Not just high, not just accenting, but just a little darker. Dry that once again. Okay, and I think one last thing I want to do here is I want to get a few dark green marks. I want to get a, enough pigment that I can overlap the the Christmas ornaments to help uh, you know make make it feel like they're not just stuck floating on top. Just a little bit to integrate those. Try and balance that dark value out a little bit. simple little card you could you could put more of a wash over top of this if you wanted to lose some of this white and glaze that a little bit more if you choose to um, but you know very simple just putting a lot of linear marks down kind of you know, making a, a porthole to look look at that snowman so I hope you enjoyed this and have fun painting